Hi, Wooden Boat fans. So yesterday I cast the ballast keel for the boat that I'm sitting in, which is a 30-foot uh, Bristol Channel Cutter, Lyle Hess design. It had rained the previous day, so uh, although I'd wanted everything to be as dry as possible, no sooner had I loaded up the bathtubs than the heavens opened up and everything got drenched. So you will see me try to deal with that situation and several more that uh, occurred over the course of the pour. Uh, and then you'll see what happened at the end. We've got some water, but uh, it's uh, not, too bad. not too bad and not in the trench, which is important. Thing. Looks nice and dry in there. Oh, whoa, whoops. <laughs> that was dumb. I was testing the pouring mechanism and uh, <laughs> some, water, some water came out. So that's water that won't be boiling. I'll do the same thing over here. Get the rainwater out of the pipes. Well, at least we know there's a clean run <clears throat> between the uh, pipes and the tub. Ugh. How dry is this stuff? The shavings seem reasonably dry. Of course, we don't know what's going on at the very bottom, uh, but Hopefully, in theory, it'll just gradually warm up and boil off <laughs> long before anything actually starts to melt. <laughs> there you are. Let's see if you can fight the tidal wave. Did you call the fire I did. I called them on the way here. Did you actually talk to them? Or did I did talk to them. Like, all good? They said, we have a pre-recorded message for you to listen to. Okay. So I listened to it. Someday this shape will be plowing through the waves. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, lead melts at 600, but it doesn't actually start to fume until uh, like a thousand degrees. So, uh, you know, it's, it's more just all the other shit that's mixed in there. Um, it's still not great for you. No, no, no. But I mean, you know, we'll let the car air out. It'll be all right. Oh, whoa. Just boiling over. 
we've uh, hit the overflow drain. Oh shit. Well, yeah. Okay. It uh, overflowed a little. Oh shit, it's happening over here too. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, we might have to because the tubs are full. <laughs> anything more and it's just going to start pouring out, so... Yeah. Alright, I think what we're going to have to do is what you were talking about. We're going to have to let some out and then let the rest uh, remelt. Unless what's in there is enough. is enough, which it may or may not be. What? Just try to get it up to 620 or so. I'm able to touch the bottom of the mold with my skimmer. So the fact that the pores were not at the exact same time is not a problem. It's going to be one solid chunk. I designed the mold with an allowance for shrink factor. You guys are the greatest. Thank you so much. Okay, so we poured the keel and then disaster struck. You see right over there where there's a big, looks like the ground has just sort of lifted up. That's exactly what's happened because the portion of the mold that had a little roof just popped right up like a can popping its top. I thought I'd uh, fastened it down really well. Apparently I had not. Uh, so I was pretty sad and I thought that this otherwise beautiful keel was ruined, but uh, 
my friends back there convinced me that it might not be. So now we're melting the remaining lead. Just put the fires back up. We're gonna pour the remaining inch or so on top here and hope that whenever we lift this out, that whatever mess is in the back here maybe can be worked into something good, perhaps with, uh, with woodworking tools. Might not work, but it's worth a shot since we're already set up here. Doesn't hurt to just pour a little more lead, so that's what we're going to do. Wish us luck. So we poured the extra lead. We're about three sixteenths below the fill mark, probably because it was all spreading out here in the back. Um, but most of it is going to be looking pretty great. So I think the plan is we're going to let it cool, hoist it out, and see what it looks like. It'll look perfect until we get right back here, at which point it'll look like it sort of has a Last of Us mushroom growing off the back. But the, par the portions that were contained within the mold should look okay. And maybe we can use those as a guide to plane down back to the lines. Uh, and then once we've shaped this back end using woodworking tools, we can take the scrap lead from that shaping, put it back into the tubs, repair the mold, embrace the back end more, uh, and then pour the remaining 3 sixteenths on top. That's the theory. We'll see if that's tenable once we pull the uh, keel out and see what it looks like. Um, might not work. We might have to just chop it up and cast it again. I'm hoping that either way we can reuse the mold. But all of that will just remain to be seen once we get this uh, out of the uh, ground. So that's how it's gonna be. So that's what happened. I don't know whether the final pour fully fused to the earlier lead, but I'm optimistic. Uh, it had only been about max an hour and a half uh, between the pours. And the lead that was pouring, coming in on top was very, very hot. The lead that was underneath was pretty clean uh, and was also still quite hot on the surface and would have been even hotter in the interior of the keel. Uh, so my hope is that by being sandwiched between the hot lead of the second pour and then the uh, hot lead, st the still hot lead down in the keel, uh, that there would be enough heat transfer to melt uh, the, uh, the very top layer and, and fuse them all together. The other good news is I'll get to see that. I'll get to inspect that joint when I take the keel out of the ground uh, and when I saw off the uh, mushroom-like growth that will have uh, developed at the aft end of the keel. Uh, <clears throat> I'll be able to saw off a chunk that will contain uh, both that uh, initial pour and then the second pour. I'll be able to examine the interface uh, and even with that chunk that I'll take off, I'll, I'll be able, if I want to, to sort of try and see if I can pry the two apart. And if I can't, that'll bode pretty well for uh, the structural integrity of the whole keel. Uh, the other thing to consider, of course, is that it's going to be bolted, through bolted, to the uh, underside of the timber keel. Uh, and the vast, vast majority of that volume will be the, that, that first initial pour. Um, so even if it's not fully fused, it's more of just a weight on the bottom than a structural component. So we'll see. I mean, it may be, if it's, if it's you know, shaken around and it's two separate pieces, yeah, I'm not going to use it. But, uh, but I'll get to examine the joint. I'll get to draw my own conclusions. Um, and I'll have the luxury of being able to examine the joint uh, and test it to failure with that piece that comes off the back, hopefully. Again, this is all speculation, 
we'll see what it looks like uh, when I actually dig the thing out of the ground. But I'm cautiously optimistic that this may be salvageable. And even if it's not fully salvageable in this case, I'm optimistic that the mold itself might be salvageable uh, and that I could uh, re-pour it in the same place in the same mold. So we'll see. If there's interest, I'll make another video showing what it looks like when it comes out of the ground. Uh, in the meantime, I, I very much welcome your comments. I want to shout out to Bob Cleek, who uh, suggested bringing roofing metal uh, to put around the tubs. That definitely worked out just great. Uh, so any other uh, advice or comments that you guys have, uh, I'll look forward to reading them. Thanks.